So if I'm a, uh, an individual thinking about a PhD program, and I've been accepted to multiple places, why should I come here to UC Irvine? Well, I mean, we don't have to talk about the weather because it's obvious. Uh, and we don't have to talk about the farmer's market that I love and go to that's right next to campus because that's not as relevant but still terrific. Uh, what I would say is that if you're going to learn how to make a difference in the world, you need a lot of skills and you need to draw from a lot of disciplines. And there's not a lot of places you can do that. Uh, but here, we've got a really good model for it. Uh, we've got rigorous methodological training, but a broad um, base of disciplinary and interdisciplinary knowledge. People here care about applying research to the real world. Uh, and that's not always the case everywhere, and that's fine. Um, but we really care about doing that. Uh, so, and in terms of policy, I think, as I said before, we're unique in an ed school with a really strong um, policy focus, uh, but that's drawing on strong developmental knowledge and is theoretically based. Um, I think our, uh, we're not gonna waste your time with milestones and exams that don't count. Everything, all the milestones we have get you a line on your resume, on your CV. You have a poster session, you have a paper that gets submitted and becomes a publication. You're working with all different types of faculty without limits on who your advisor is and who your advisor isn't. We just have this nice open system that involves students generating science, presenting it, making it their own, uh, and, be, and having access to faculty from so many different areas. So uh, it's just, you can't get that everywhere. You can get it here though. So, um, so I think all of that plus everything California has to offer. <laughs> so you've made a, a great case for why a, a PhD student with an interest in education policy might want to come to UCI. But what about the PhD student with an interest in human development or teaching and learning? What, the exposure to educational policy, why might that be relevant for them? What's really rewarding is uh, guiding students from a developmental or um, teacher education or even ed educational technology background into learning how to zoom out and see policy and then focusing in on what that means in its application for early childhood. So I think when you're focusing very intensely on uh, you know, reading comprehension and linguistics and measurement and instrumentation of children, as an example, um, and focusing on, say, kindergartner reading comprehension. Understanding the policy context that drives um, why we support some reading interventions or why school districts use some practices over other, others, why some, um, how some instruments are used um, or measurements are used to understand child well-being at scale. Um, really learning the population level implications of how reading comprehension is taken um, to be understood by policymakers, uh, the and you know things as broad as how did uh, how do federal reforms influence the way we teach education and reading in schools and and then seeing how that might trickle down not just to tested grades like what we think about third through 12th grade and K-12, but how does that affect early elementary education where um, many students might be focused and um, how does that affect the opportunity set for certain families? And so I think um, understanding, being able to see a global picture of how federal funds, policies and regulations influence opportunities for education brings a help students to see both the increased relevance of their work and to be able to frame questions in ways that are more relevant um, for policy applications. So I think that's really rewarding for me, seeing students develop that. Uh, and I've had a few of them just like, this is really hard uh, to when you've been trained in one way to think another. But that's part of the philosophy of our PhD program, right? And so uh, I think it's just essential. Um, and it uh, would be short-sighted to not want to learn about the broader context.